Hey, good morning. The following video is part of the familiarization for the IBMYPE assessment for mathematics. Mr. Dan Wilms will walk you through the organization, the navigation, the tools used to answer the questions, and then how to finish up the test. Make sure you watch the video all the way to the end because there's some really important parts that are covered. Hi everyone, and welcome to your guided tour of the IBMYP mathematics e-assessment. Uh, this is Mr. Wilms, and I will be showing you around once you've logged in and entered all the information that's provided to you. Uh, you will be taken to this screen right here. Uh, notice that the examination hasn't started yet. You'll be given two hours to complete it. Uh, it'll tell you how many questions there are. So here there are eight questions and the total number of marks, which should be 100. So let's go ahead and get started uh, by hitting the start button here. So this is what the assessment looks like. You can see that there are eight questions listed over here on the right hand side. And then those questions are also given right here. Uh, you can scroll down to see the rest of them. Criteria C is assessed throughout on all eight of the questions. Criterion A is assessed on in this case right here on the first five questions. So questions one through five, uh, you will be assessed on criterion A and criterion C. If you scroll down to question six and seven, those are criterion D. So applying mathematics in real life contexts. And then question eight uh, is going to be criterion B and again criterion C, which is throughout. Okay, so now that we've seen how the questions are organized, um, the way that you navigate through each of the questions is you simply click on the question to open it up. If you wanna know how many parts are available, notice the total marks are given over here on the right. If you click that drop down box right there, you'll see that there are two parts to this question for a total of four marks. Question two, eight marks, has three different parts. Once you open up a question, you will see all of the different parts. Okay, so now I have the question loaded and I can scroll down to see all of the different parts. Mini questions will have media that is useful for uh, understanding what's going on in the question. So if I scroll all the way back up to the top, we have right here a video which introduces some information about the International Space Station. So that video will provide some background information that may be useful in answering some of the parts in this particular question. In the next part, we can see that we have uh, an interactive media that goes along with the next several parts. So as I continue to scroll down, that bit of media stays right there and the other parts of the question can be seen. Once we get past that part of the question where that media is no longer relevant, we go down to the next bit of media. Notice this one is interactive. As you slide this control over, it will adjust the diagram so that you can see some particular information that will be relevant to the rest of the question. So scrolling back up to the previous diagram, notice that this one is also interactive. So if we hover over a letter, it will tell us some additional information about what that represents. In order to answer a question, there are several different ways that you can input information into the answer box. So if I click in that box, I can simply type whatever I want. That's the first thing we can do. The second way that you can enter in information is using this sigma symbol right here which opens up an equation editor that you can use. So if I open this, it will take me to a new window, uh, a new entry box where I can use the math templates that are available in order to enter in the equation. One thing to keep in mind is that there are certain symbols that you should not be using when you are typing uh, an answer into one of the answer boxes. And these will 
lower your score for Criterion C. So symbols that you do not want to use at all are the star, the slash, and the caret for multiplication, division, and exponentiation respectively. So you want to make sure that you are representing those things using the correct symbols that you would have here. In order to insert the equation that we want to have, we just hit confirm down here and that will insert the equation uh, right there. In this case, we're asked to calculate the surface area. So I'm going to go to a new line and I'm going to use the calculator, which can be found up here at the top in order to do this calculation. So from the calculator, I can type in the calculation that I want to do. Now, I don't really want to have to retype that whole thing. So what I can do is use this symbol right here, which will import the last calculation, the last line of calculation from the calculator into this box. It will put all of that in there plus the answer. My answer is supposed to be in standard form, so I will need to rewrite this, and that will be my final answer. If I want to edit this equation, I can double click on it to reopen it, and I can go back and I could put in equals, or better yet, in approximately equals, in front of that before inserting it. When you're entering in the information in here, uh, you will be marked according to Criterion C. And Criterion C involves the correct use of notation and terminology. So some notation that you never want to use in one of your answers is the star for multiplication, the slash for division, and the caret for exponentiation. These right here should never be used. You also have right here a formula sheet. So if we select this formula sheet, it will take us to something that uh, looks very similar to the, the formula sheet that you get in class. So if you select area, it will take you to uh, the area formulas. You can go back, you can go to, let's say, Pythagoras and trigonometry, and you can see all of that information that's right there. Okay. In some questions, you may have an additional set of formulas that are available, and those will appear at the top of the question. You want to navigate to another question, or you want to get back to the main screen where you can see all the questions at once. There are two different ways that you can do that. Uh, three, actually. The first way is at the top of the question, you can simply close that question and it will take you back to the main screen. Uh, alternatively, if you want to go to a different question, you can just go over to the right hand side and click on the question that you want to go to. And finally, if you click up here on the IB Middle Years Program logo, that will also take you back to the main screen where you can see all of the questions at once. Thing. This uh, right here is something that you can use to bookmark a part of a question. So if we go back into question six, and I want to go to 6D, uh, notice that there is a bookmark option right here. I can select that, and it will bookmark that part of the question, right? And then show that I have that bookmark. So if I want to save this to return to later, and then again, if you want to turn it off, you can select that. Uh, and then this right here will show you which questions you have bookmarked once you've done that. When you're ready to end the exam, what you want to do is go up to this menu here where you see assistance at the top. If you drop this down, you'll see two options. The first is quit, and that will be the only one that's available during the first hour. The second one is finish early. Quit will end the exam, um, but will not uh, finish it completely. Finish early is what you need to do to end the exam and to generate the file that will be used to produce your answer sheet that can then be marked. So if we go to finish early, it will show us this warning right here. We want to hit yes, enter in your name. 
The examination ends, the data is collected, and the response is produced. The file that this will generate, this response that you get right here, this warning, is completely normal. So don't worry about this at all. Just hit exit, so it'll pop up a folder with the response. That response will need to be sent to your teacher or the invigilator of the exam according to those instructions, and that is used to produce uh, an answer response that can then be marked. We hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, let us know, and we would like to wish you all the best in your e-assessments.